So if I've said it once, I've said it a million times. This series is all about you guys and what you guys want to see and what you guys think is interesting because at the end of the day, you guys are what motivate me and what make this channel go. So the changes that you guys are going to see today are a direct result of requests straight from the comment section, straight from the minds of the viewers. And those changes are the changes that I made to not only the uniforms, but also one of the bigger pain points it seemed like of the series so far, which was the logo. So welcome back everybody to episode 13 of the Louisville Badgers, and we are going to hop right into this. I am going to reveal to you guys the brand new logo and the full overhaul I did with not only our uniform, but also our home court. And there you have it. This will be the new Louisville Badgers logo moving forward permanently, okay? I know you guys wanted it to look a lot more like a Badger, and uh, I didn't want to go, you know, too far with it, but I wanted it to look a little more like a Badger, which is what you guys were requesting. Uh, so this is what I went with. I hope you guys really like it. But now let's move on to the even more exciting part, and that is the new uniforms. This will be our home or association uniform. You see we got the uh, the new colorway with, uh, uh, if you guys haven't noticed, it's kind of like the old Spurs throwback colorway. And then this is our uh, away uniform. And in case you guys didn't notice, this was actually a piece of advice that I got from uh, a viewer in the comment section that is actually from Louisville, Kentucky. He said, why not go with UPS as a sponsor since UPS is a Louisville, Kentucky based company. So that is exactly what we did. Now, getting into one of the more interesting aspects of this uniform, I decided to also change the city edition or statement edition jersey. And here it is right here. So this alternate is a tribute to the 101st Airborne Division, and they are based in Kentucky, right? I believe it's right in Louisville, Kentucky, actually, at Fort Campbell. Uh, this alternate uh, was an idea from one of the viewers. You'll see we've got Airborne across the chest, and then on the waistline, we've got the 101, which is a nod to the 101st Infantry Airborne Division. And then, as you can see on the left leg of the shorts, I kind of went with a, uh, a little uh, design that almost looks like, you know, one of the uh, U.S. Army military rank symbols. So thought that was a really cool thing to add in there, too. And then, as you can see here, this is our brand new home court with a brand new floor. I redid all the line work, got the new logo right in the center of the uh, of the arena there, right in the center of the court floor. I think it looks really, really good. And like I said earlier, man, I couldn't be happier with the way this turned out. I'm so glad you guys pushed for this because I absolutely love this redesign. So anyway, now that that's out of the way, let's move into simulating some of these games until we get up to the November 2nd game against the Vancouver Bullets because that's the game that you guys said you wanted to see. You wanted me to play the Vancouver Bullets on their home floor since we designed that arena. So we are going to play them on this date on November 2nd. So we're going to simulate up to that point. And first up, we've got the Denver Nuggets. And we beat them by three. So look at that. We win our first two games of the season. John Morant with a decent game. Brooke Lopez, Jaron Jackson, both having a, you know, a really, really big impact so far here early on in the season. So that is really, really promising to see. I know you guys actually mentioned that I should move Ja Morant to the second scoring option and have Jaron Jackson as the first scoring option. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to move Jaron Jackson as our first scoring option, and I'm going to put Ja as our second scoring option for a few reasons. Number one, uh, Jaron Jackson is a little more seasoned now in his second year. Ja Morant is still a rookie, and I think that, you know, the way that we have our team set up and the way we run our offense, I think running it through Jaron Jackson is just the better option for us. As you see on the other side, Nikola Jokic with a really good game, 16 points, 13 boards. Jamal Murray coming up big, so they had a pretty decent game themselves. Next up, we got the OKC Thunder. We'll simulate through this one, and we lost badly. All right, so our first loss of the season, Westbrook and Paul George both putting up 27 on us. Dennis Schroeder putting up 19, Frank Fullwood, our hashtag ad player, putting up 12. Uh, we didn't have anybody that really scored a whole lot for us. Jaron Jackson with 14 points, four boards. 
Myers Leonard came up actually pretty big, 16 points in 11 minutes. It's really, really, uh, really good, actually. Forbes with 13 points in 18 minutes, so our bench did really well in this one for us. Next up, we got the Miami Heat. And we lose to the Heat by 10. Goran Dragic, 28 points, 4 assists. J.J. Redick, the new addition, he's not doing too bad, it looks like, this season. He's got 14 on us in this game. And it looks like this game was very similar to the last. We didn't have anybody score over 16 points. Jaron Jackson with 16 points and 14 rebounds, though. Next up, we got the Bulls. They beat us by 14. Zach Levine with 23. Dunn with 20. John Morant with 25 points. Jaron Jackson with 23. So a great game from our two stars. And look at this. Naz Reed with a really good game. He's, he's already averaging 13.5 points per game. And it looks like he's playing quite a few minutes for them as well. So he's having himself a good season. He scored 18 on us. So here we are. Now we've got the game against the Vancouver Bullets. As we take a look at the matchups here. And I think we match up pretty well against them, honestly. I think that this is definitely a very, very winnable game. But let's see how it all plays out against the expansion team that you guys voted for. We're heading up to Vancouver. Now, I have to apologize to you guys right off the bat about something, okay? I did tell you guys that I would press up on the D-pad to show you guys the stats while we were in game. I completely forgot to do that this time around. I absolutely promise you that in the next game, I will make sure that I remember to do that. So here we are at tip off against the Vancouver Bullets, your Vancouver Bullets, the, the team that you guys voted in as the new expansion team for this year. As I'm sure most of you guys remember, they drafted Cam Reddish, and uh, they've actually had a pretty decent start to the season so far. Uh, I think that they were something like, uh, you know, like 4-1 and one or 5-1 and one in their first few games of the season, so they're having a pretty decent year so far. As you guys will see, this game actually worked out perfectly for how I wanted to do this today. I wanted to be able to show you guys some at the end, so uh, that's what we're going to be able to do. I'm going to be able to show you guys, uh, you know, the last few minutes of the fourth quarter in real time as it played out as I was playing it, uh, and, you know, my commentary with it live for the first time. Uh, so that'll be really cool as you see Morant nailing a three from outside there. Um, he actually had a really good game from deep. I was really confident with uh, taking those shots with him. That's a really, really good sign for him. He's had a few games where he struggled from three, so when he can get it going, that's always a really, really good sign. Cam missing from the outside there. Uh, so I wanted to show you guys at least the first few minutes of the game here, you know, as we start off on the Bullets' home floor. Uh, I did, like I said earlier, I did go with you guys' advice and play them in Vancouver so that we could see, uh, you know, uh, the Royal Bank of Canada Center. Uh, as we, you know, as we set it up and as we designed it. Uh, so I know this was something that you guys wanted to see. Uh, but as we go through these highlights here, uh, one of the things that I wanted to talk about and get you guys' advice on is going in the next season, uh, how you guys think we should handle, you know, our team and handle free agency and handle the, the moves that we should do, you know, whether it be moves leading up to the trade deadline or moves that we do, you know, in the offseason uh, trade-wise. I want to see how you guys think we should handle this because the biggest free agent that's going to be coming up, you know, this season, I believe, is going to be Kawhi Leonard. I don't think there's going to be too too much more as, in terms of superstars. Uh, you know, this year was kind of like an exception to that rule. There was uh, quite a few, you know, uh, big name players that were, were free agents, but next year it's going to be a little less, uh, you know, a little less packed as far as the free agent pool is concerned. You know, with uh, with big name talent, uh, so you know. You guys let me know what you think. Should we go for a guy like Kawhi Leonard, offer him a max contract? Because we're going to have the money to do it. Uh, we've got plenty of cap space to do it. And, uh, you know, so, you know, if there's a team out there that can afford him next year, it'll be us. Uh, but the thing is, I don't know if he'll sign with us. And, um, you know, would that be something you guys would want to see me going after a big name like that? You know, if I was to decide to do that, would that be something that would intrigue you guys and, and, and be interesting for this series? Uh, because, you know, in the long run, you know, I, I think I've said it before and I've mentioned it in a few comments. Uh, we are going to need uh, another star on this team. Uh, you know, I know that we want to draft well and we want to position ourselves in that way and everything. But, you know, I do want to be able to pick up a big name, you know, outside of the draft that we can, you know, have to complement our young guys. And, uh, you know, of course, Kawhi Leonard would be a perfect pickup. 
I just think it's going to be really hard to get him, especially with the settings uh, that I'm playing on. You know, I made it harder for us to, you know, trade with teams. I made it harder for us to sign free agents. Not much harder, but just a little harder just to make it a little more realistic. Um, so, you know, it's going to be even harder than it would normally be to sign a guy like Kawhi. But, you know, it will be possible because we can throw max money at him. Uh, and you know, see how he, you know, see how he responds to the offer. Uh, so you guys, let me know what you think about that, um, because it's something that I've been pondering, you know, for a little bit now. And I know a lot of you guys have commented and asked about, you know, when we might target a big name star. Uh, so I just wanted to see what you guys think about that. And look at that block by Brooke Lopez. You guys got to see this. I mean, Alex Len was doing a lot of work uh, on us up to this point, you know, especially on the boards. And then Brooke Lopez got blocked at the other end by Len. He came up on this end and said, you know what? No way. Boom. Blocked that thing into the first row. So uh, that, was, uh, that was a heck of a block there. So uh, one, of my, one of my favorite parts of the game, actually. You see Cam Reddish just nailing it from the outside there. He actually had a really good game here. And he's having himself a pretty good rookie season so far, too. Um, so anyway, getting back to the game. Look at this little loot play here. That, that's an impossible play to defend in 2K, it seems like. I mean, I score on that play quite frequently. Uh, whether it's a three-pointer or a mid-range or even just driving to the bucket, I mean, that 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 uh, that player that goes on that little loop off the screen is usually in a, a great position to score. Uh, you see here, we're turning uh, defense into some offense. Avery Bradley up on the other end uh, after the steal. Uh, but yeah, anyway, like I was saying, I really like the way the uh, the arena here turned out. I like the way the jerseys look in game. And uh, I'm, I'm talking about, you know, the Bullets jerseys and our jerseys, for that matter, are looking really, really fresh in game as well. You know, like uh, our first action with these jerseys on. Uh, I hope you guys really like them. I'm loving them. I am really loving them. I'm glad that I made the decision to actually change the jerseys up and take you guys' advice because it really, really worked out for the best. But anyway, you see here, we're at the end of the third quarter, and we're about to transition to the point where uh, I'm going to be commentating the game live here. So we're going to move right into that, uh, and I want you guys' feedback on that. You know, let me know if this is something that you guys like, and we'll do it more in the future. You know, seeing me go through the game live and, uh, you know, hearing me talk live as I'm going through everything, as I'm going through the motions. Uh, and, you know, uh, uh, hopefully you guys, it's something that you guys enjoy. But anyway, I will turn it over to my live commentary as I finish out right, there we go. this nail biter of a fourth Push quarter. Karooch, I mean, wide open, wide open. There we go. There we go. A little bit of a late release, but that gives us a one point lead. Let's get it. Oh, oh, come on. Man, Norman Powell has just been crushing us all game. 22 points, 8 of 13. We gotta get something going here. This is really coming down to the wire. There we go. There we go. The green light. Jaron Jackson, man, he's been our constant. He has been our constant. Just gotta play some defense here. They're playing us a they're playing a much better game than I expected, man. We we seemed like we had this one early on. Well, we just can't let Norman Powell or Cam Reddish beat us. They're the two guys that I'm worried about the most here. Get on ball here. Nope. Oh! Oh my god, what a shot. What a fadeaway shot there. Man, I I can't even be mad at that one. I cannot even be mad at that. Let's see what we can do here. Oh no no no. Ah, that was supposed to go to Jaron Jackson. I don't know why the skip pass happened there. Okay. Alright. Mmm. See, this is always a pain point for us, man. This is always, always a pain point for us is the offensive boards. These teams always get these offensive boards on us. There we go. Terrible shot. I should not have put that up. I thought I was going to draw the foul there. Okay. All right. We're good. It's only it's still a three-point game. We're, we're, we're still good. Oof. Thought we had to steal. Oh, there we go. There we go. Look at the dive for the ball. Perfect. All right. Now we got to push. We got to push here. Kick it back. There we go. There we go. Okay. All right. That was smooth. That was smooth. Two minutes to go here. Whew, this one's getting tight, man. This one is getting tight. We just got to defend well here, and we'll be we'll be okay. I know we can score. 
I feel confident we can score with who we have on the, on the floor right now. Come on. Careful with that pick. Uh, watch the offensive board. Uh, and I see, I saw it coming from a mile away, too. Alex Lynn was in perfect. I, I got to change something here. You guys let me know if there's something I can change here for these offensive boards. I mean, I, I've got crash boards on, I believe, but I have to check that. Mm, oh, God. That was a shot that I wasn't really, didn't really actually want to shoot there. I wanted to drive a little bit more, but I'm glad he made that. All right, now it's really, mm, now it's really coming down to the wire here. Block, yes. There we go. There we go. Push it. There we go. Uh, there we go. Ooh. That should not have been smothered. That should not have been smothered. That was that was rough there. That that was really oh god, yeah. Yeah, that was a four point swing. Really, really rough four point swing. We should have had that. No. Oh, you got to be kidding me, the illegal screen. Oh, man, I wonder if that's something I did there. I, I always wonder that. I always wonder if it's something I do coming off the pick that causes that to get called like that. All right, man, we got we to lock down here. We got No, you got past me. Okay, force him into a bad shot. All right. Oh, oh I didn't need the three there. I didn't need it. It just looked too good. That that's probably it. That's pro. Oh, yep. There it is. They score here. That's about. That's about it. I would think. Yep. There it is. Beautiful. Yeah. I can't even look. I can't even be mad at that. Alex Len, man, he's been crushing us. He has been crushing us, and he's shown us why uh, we should have protected him. I guess. All right. Here we go. Forbes. Oof. It looked good. The release looked good, but we're going to have to foul now, and it's uh, probably just about over at this point. We're not even in the penalty yet. And now we should be. Yeah, man. I think we blew this one. If he makes both of these, it's done. I mean, it's probably done anyway, but if he makes both, we're, it's definitely done. Yeah, that seals it. Well, I mean, it, it was close. It was close, man. I didn't have to take that three with Jaren, Jaren Jackson. It, it looked good from where I was, you know, from where I was shooting it. Let's see if Myers Leonard, yeah. Nope. Yeah, I didn't have to take that shot, man. I didn't have to take it, and I, I, I probably shouldn't have. But the, the shot that he missed before that, almost point blank, was I think what really, uh, what really made it really tough for us. But there is your final, guys. 114 to 107. It did come down to the wire. I mean, a seven-point win, it probably doesn't seem like it came down to the wire that much. But, I mean, the game was really, really, really close throughout. There was something like something crazy like 14 lead changes. So it was definitely like a tight, tight game throughout the entirety. What it really came down to is at the end, they had some shots fall where we came up short. And, uh, you know, that's really what the difference was in the game. So there you have it. Once again, we lose to the Bullets 114 to 107. Like I said, I mean, I feel like this was a very winnable game, uh, but, you know, it just kind of got tough there at the end. Uh, but, you know, those things are to be expected. Uh, you know, we're not a very polished team yet, so uh, we're not going to win them all. Uh, you know, we did a really, really great job in that Pelicans game on opening night. Uh, you know, but this one was a little bit tougher for some reason. Um, they just seemed to stick around with us the whole time, as you guys saw. So, anyway... We're going to move on from that one. Now, real quick before we start simulating, I do want to move uh, Bryn Forbes as the third scoring option for us uh, because he is starting now. So let me do that real quick. And now we've got the Pacers up. So let's see here. We simulate and we lose to them 127-111. Let's see how this one went for us. Jaron Jackson with a very good game. Uh, Morant with a double-double, 10 points, 11 assists. So not a bad game from him. Kemba Walker with 34, 4 and 5. Oladipo. That this this is a very good team this year, man. They have a very very good deep team, um, and you know with Kevin Love and Oladipo and Kemba Walker, they've got their center of the future, their power forward of the future. 
Um, you know, so this is a this is a dangerous team this season, man. Some something to watch out for. Um, next up, we got the Bulls. We lose to the Bulls by 27. Let's see, Levine, Markinen, Naz Reed with another very good game. Let's see how he's doing. Yeah, he's scoring like 13 points a game, man, and he's uh. I think he's playing some significant minutes for him. Yeah, he's playing 28 minutes a game, so he's starting for him. And, uh, you know, he's doing really, really well. Morant with 26, 4, and 6, so not a bad game from him. Now we've got the Washington Wizards, who, as we know, have Jarrett Culver. And the last I checked, he was the uh, leading rookie scorer, at least on a points-per-game basis, uh, with like 22 points a game, and we lose to them by 5. Let's take a look here. Bradley Beal, he scored 24, 9 rebounds, 4 assists against us. Culver had 18, so not a bad game. Forbes led us in scoring with 23. Jaron Jackson with a double-double. Morant struggled mightily, but he still had 9 assists, uh, but 0 for 7 from 3. So Now we've got the Suns, and we know that um, R.J. Barrett is injured. So R.J. Barrett, at least the last I checked, he was injured. I'm not sure if he'll play in this game. Uh, but we lose to them by three. Let's take a look here. And he did play. He played a minute. <laughs> so this must have been like his first game back or something. He played one minute, hit a three. Must have been at the end of the game or something like that. But um, anyway, Booker put up 34 on us and so did Aiton. Man, them guys are playing a lot of minutes. 41 minutes from Booker and 45 minutes from DeAndre Aiton in a game that didn't even go into overtime. Uh, Jaron Jackson, 28 points, 11 rebounds. So a great game from him. Uh, Morant struggled a bit again, but not a big deal. You know what I mean? We're, we're developing him. We're trying to trying to turn him into our star of the future. So it's going to take some time. I'm not expecting him to be, you know, the big man on campus right off the bat. Now we've got the Grizzlies, who I think we match up pretty well against. Uh, we should be able to beat them. And we do. We beat them by one. Valanchunas had a good game. Wendell Carter had a good game. And keep in mind, we did our own draft last year. So that's why... You know, Memphis has Wendell Carter, so he's having himself a decent season so far. Um, Jaron Jackson with 28, 9, 3, 3 steals, 1 block. I, I know I've said it before, man. I just, I'm amazed by his defense. He is just an amazing defender. John Morant had a decent game himself. Let's see here. Now we've got our home opener uh, against Denver. Um, so, and the, like I said, the only reason I'm not playing this one is because I don't think that Denver really has all that interesting of a team this year. I think that they're really like the same as they were last year. I mean, yeah, they're like the same team. So I think that's why it makes more sense for us to play our first home game against San Antonio. Uh, I just think that they're a little bit more of an interesting matchup. Um, so, you know, that's what we're going to do. So we'll simulate this one through, and we lose by 30. All right. Jaron Jackson, as per usual, pretty good game. Jokic with, oh, my God. 37 points and 25 rebounds. Are you kidding me right now? This is our first game against San Antonio. This one is away. And oh no. Okay. Well. Mo Wagner. This is your chance, buddy. It's not like we're making any kind of a playoff run, so... It's not a big deal if I, I get him some, some, you know, significant playing time. So let's see how we do in the first game against the Spurs. And we lose by 26. So now we got Golden State, who uh, even though they don't have Kevin Durant, we know that they're okay. Look at them. They're 10-2 and two right now. And, uh, you know, the fact they, they've got Chris Middleton. And like I, I said it before, but if he can even be a fraction of what Kevin Durant was, uh, I think this team is going to be just fine. Let's see how we do. And we lose. So, let's take a look. Forbes with a decent game. Morant, where are you, man? Curry, 33 points, 11 assists. Clay Thompson. And so, yeah, like I was saying, I mean, they are doing just fine. Wait, wait where's Chris Middleton? He's, oh, that sucks. He must be injured. Let me take a look at that real fast, actually. And he is. Oh, my God. He tore his ACL. He's out for the season. Oh, no. Oh, that's terrible. These things happen. I mean, they're still 11 and 2, though. So, um, and we saw them beat Houston without Kevin Durant with basically the same team that they are running out on the floor right now. So, um, you know, will they be fine? I think so. So, anyway, next up, we've got the Magic in Orlando. 
And they're 9-4, and four, so they're not doing too bad at all. And we lose to them by 20. Trey Young drops 28 on us. Evan Fournier, Aaron Gordon. So this is going to be a dangerous team, man. I can see why they're doing well. I mean, they've got Trey Young. They've got Fournier, Aaron Gordon, Terrence Romeo, our hashtag ad player. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see him getting minutes. Next up, we got the ridiculously stacked Boston Celtics. They are somehow 6-8 and eight on the season right now, so maybe it's a chemistry thing with them, uh, but not, not having a great start to the season. Let's see how we do against them. And we lose by 41. All right, let's see. Wasn't a great game all the way around for us, the Celtics. So Kyrie and Anthony Davis, they're doing their thing, man. AD with 22 points, 17 boards. Um, so they are doing their thing. All right, next up, we got a tough matchup against the 76ers, who are 10-4, and four, so they're having a really good season so far themselves. And we lose to them, okay, by 22. All right, so Ja with a double-double. Jaron Jackson with 40 points. 40 points on 15 of 24 shooting. What a night. 40 points, 9 rebounds, 3 assists, 2 steals, and a block, only 1 turnover. Ja Morant with a 13-point double-double, so uh, despite the fact that we, you know, it was in a losing effort. Bryn Forbes with a decent game himself. Next up, we got the Hawks, who are 7-10, and 10, and we beat them by 8, so not a bad game here. So Jaron Jackson with 21, Morant with 20, Forbes with 16. Romeo Langford, check that out, they're a rookie. They're, uh, what was he, like the fifth overall pick or something like that. 26 points. So they got, a, they got a decent little team going on here, but they couldn't handle us on this particular evening. Next up, we've got the Cleveland Cavaliers, who are somehow 10-6, and 6, but they beat us. Colin Sexton, wow. Sexton, Rose, Clarkson. That seems to be... Uh, and, oh, that's right, and they have Malcolm Brogdon, too, who's not doing too bad. But that brings us to the home game against the Spurs on November 30th, which will be the first home game that we'll be playing here in this new season. So we'll be diving right into that one in the next episode. We'll get to take a look at uh, Rui Hachimura, see how he does and everything. And, uh, you know, Spurs have a pretty decent, pretty deep team. So, uh, you know, it's not going to be an easy matchup, but we're ready for it for sure. We're going to be on our home turf. So, uh, you know, it should be a good game. And hopefully if you guys liked the way I did uh, the format for the gameplay this time around in this episode, I'll do the same thing or something similar for the Spurs game in the next episode. So you guys comment down below. Let me know if you liked it, if it's something that worked for you. We'll continue to do it. Before we wrap things up, though, I want to take a quick look at a couple things. First off, let's take a look at the league leaders. And my God, yeah, is it any surprise? Steph Curry scoring 35.3 points per game to go along with four rebounds a game, almost five, eight and a half assists per game. Um, yeah, great season from him. Harden averaging almost 30. Kawhi averaging 29. Giannis averaging 26 and a half per game. So the top five here, uh, very, very realistic. You got LeBron up there with 23 and a half per game. Booker, D'Angelo Russell, Dame Lillard, Kemba having a really good season. Oladipo, Trey Young, DeRozan, Bradley Beal. So, uh, very realistic top 15 here. Um, you know, in terms of on a points per game basis now let's turn to the rookie report so Jarrett Culver continuing to score over 20 per game having a monster monster rookie season uh, you know like I said man where where the Washington Wizards ended up drafting him was an absolute steal uh, he was easily a top five talent probably should have gone top five Seku he's uh, picked up his game lately scoring 14 per game so now I see why Cleveland has been doing you know as well as they have they've had uh you know a lot of great production out of colin sexton uh they brought back derrick rose who's doing really well for them jordan clarkson's doing really well and then they got seku doing really well as a rookie cam reddish almost 14 points a game Ja almost 14 a game and seven assists i believe he is uh either second or leading all rookies in assists i think who else was there here oh yeah connor sullivan <laughs> so yeah he's second uh, among all rookies and assists. Nasir Little having a great season for the Jazz so far. And there, there is Langford right there. So he he is having himself a decent year for Atlanta. Kevin Porter Jr., 13 a game. R.J. Barrett and Zion, almost identical numbers so far, except Zion is rebounding a lot more. Uh, and uh, R.J. is assisting a little more. 
Connor Sullivan having a good year. So yeah, I mean, pretty realistic numbers so far from uh, from a lot of these rookies. Um, this is you know kind of where I expected everybody to be. I don't know if I expected Culver to be that high up, you know, on a points per game basis. But I mean, you know, like I said, he, he's he's a guy with with just a ton of talent. And uh, to say I don't think anybody could say that they're surprised by this. Really, I mean, he he's a scorer. That's what he is. He he is a scorer and an assassin, and that's what he was at Texas Tech, so, uh, you know, not a whole lot to be surprised about there, but yeah, it's going to be an interesting uh, Rookie of the Year race as, you know, as the year progresses, and because uh, I do think that Zion is going to, you know, really start to break out a little bit more, he's already starting to do that now, uh, and I think that, you know, I think our boy Ja is going to make it interesting, I don't think Culver will really be able to keep this up, uh, you know, with the 20 points per game. Uh, however, you know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'll be wrong about that. I just think that things will even out a little bit more here, and you'll start to see some of these guys down here, uh, you know, start to, to make strides in the right direction and start to pull their game up, and then Culver will kind of regress to the mean a little bit. But that's just my prediction. That's just what I think will happen. Oh, and just on a quick side note, whoever it was that told me to fix Drew Holiday's hair, there you go. Boom. He's got his dreads like he's supposed to now. He doesn't have that dusty haircut anymore, uh, <laughs> as you said. So, uh, yep, there you go. Also, real quick, before I forget, a lot of you guys were asking to see what LaMelo Ball would look like. I uh, haven't decided yet if he's going to be a part of this next draft class coming up or the one following, uh, but I'll do some research on that and find out when I think he's going to come out. I think he would probably come out in the next draft class, honestly, but we'll see how it all goes. You guys can actually comment down below and let me know what you think about that, but here is LaMelo. But anyway, in the next episode, we've got the Spurs game to play. We've got some more simulating to do. I've got some more hashtag ad players to reveal for you guys. And, spoiler alert, I've got the details of a really cool NBA 2K20 giveaway that'll be coming up at the end of the summer. I'll give you guys all the details on that in the next episode as well. So I hope to see you guys then. But until next time, I'll catch you guys later.